I just watching them pollywogs turn into frogs. Don't go into sight. You ever see it happen, sir? While you're watching pollywogs, 40 head of horses and mules are hollering for water. Oh, well, yes, sir. I'm just getting a fill. Well, getting to it is not getting the job done. Now, you've got to stop mooning around here, Chad. If you're going to be a member of this family, you've got to pull your share. Now, get that wagon loaded and out of here. Yes, sir. deepest well and Spanish wells. Well, it's worse at my place. But without water, this town's gonna dry up and blow away. Not a chance. I've got too much money invested in it. Besides, there's plenty of water. Not a mile outside of town. Yeah, Squaw Hill. That's right. Never run in spring up there, with the whole river running under it. Well, we could put in a steam pump, build a standpipe, pipe all the water we'll ever need. That's Lancer land. He could really hold us up if he wanted to. Well, I think I can persuade him to be reasonable. That is, if you gentlemen will back me up. Well, at least it can't hurt to talk to the man. Let's ride out. We don't have to. He's riding in. Chad, you and that horse got to make friends. Mm. We'll get the hang of it someday. Here you will. You meet us back here, son, in about a half an hour, huh? Yes, sir. Think you'll ever make a hand, Johnny? Yeah, he's learning. Might be better if you eased up on him a bit. You want me to treat him like a charity case? He's that proud he'd know in a minute if I eased up on him. Go get this old man. Oh, boss. Look what you went and did. Hey, don't fuss that he didn't mean nothing. Say, wife, this don't look like one of them Lancer boys. Oh, my, Loomis. My, oh, my, oh, my. You sure are in trouble. If I'd known that, I'd been a lot more careful where I stuck my big feet. Say, you didn't, you didn't say which Lancer. Why, sure. Why, it's a hilly-billy one. Yeah, the one they call useless. Hey, tell me, useless. No kidding, when are you gonna learn to stick on a horse? Shucks. They don't ride horses back there where he come from. <laughs> I know my man back there, he don't do nothing but just lay in the shade, uh, sucking on a straw while the woman does all the work. <laughs> Ain't that so, Hilly Billy? <laughs> I guess if you say so. Excuse me. Excuse me. I guess if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Too much money in building this town to see that happen. I'll pay Lancer any price within reason for the water lease on the hill. If you do pipe water into town, you're going to charge for it? Only until the costs are repaid. Well, we're not using Squaw Hill water. It's a deal. In fact, we'll furnish men and equipment to help you build your standpipe and your pipelines. <sighs> you're meant to help. That's mighty nice. And what are you figuring on charging for all of this? A dollar a year. A dollar a year. Now, this ain't no joking matter. 
My son and I think that a town is very important. Now, let's get together on a starting date. Well, I, I have the plans for the standpipe and the line system right here. <laughs> You don't see too many of those around this part of the country. What's to study about a danged old hawk looking for mice? Chad. Of course. They warp the wings. They warp the wings. That's it. They warp the wings. You hear that? Well, of course I heard it. You think I'm deaf or something? Well, it's mighty interesting what he just said. Well, fine, but what's it supposed to mean? I don't know. I can tell from the way he said it, it was important. Will you get in the wagon? When you step on me, I'm liable to warp you some. people doing here? Get off my land. Oh, put the gun down, fella. This isn't your land. You get out of the way before we run you over. You won't run very far. Now, I got a government paper that says this land is mine. This hill is mine. Now, you get off it. Hey, you heard the man, boys. Hold it. This man's got a government paper. Maybe we better take a look at it before we start a ruckus here. Where is this paper of yours, sir? It's up in my place. I propose we go along and have a look at it. 
I don't care what kind of paper he's got. I lease water rights for this hill and I'm staying. You better holster that gun and give the belt to Jelly. Yes, sir, Mr. Lancer. You go ahead and take the wagon and Mr. Fanning here and the rest of these men go down the bottom of the hill. I'll go along with this fellow and take a look at his papers. You're acting mighty sudden for a dumb hillbilly, Lancer. The next time we meet, you best be wearing a gun. Well, now, there's one thing us dumb hillbillies do real well, and that's shoot the eyes out of a squirrel at a hundred paces. I'm getting just mad enough to overlook the fact that you ain't a squirrel and we're standing nose to nose. You get it. something to add to that, Jelly? <clears throat> Not a word, Mr. Lancer. Not a word. All right, you men, just keep going there. Ain't you the fella I saw watching a hawk the other day? It wasn't a hawk, young man. It was a peregrine falcon. Oh, yeah, peregrine falcon. Yeah. Well, let me show you that paper. Sure. Air Green Falcon. Hey, don't touch that. It's wound up tight. Come on. Papers at the barn. Even if that paper of yours is in order, what's the harm in letting Mr. Fannin have the water lease? He intends to build a structure. I saw building materials in those wagons. Yeah, well, that's true, but one standpoint paper can take up that much room. Well, break the flow of air currents across that hill. What if it does? I need the unimpeded flow of air currents to test my flying machine. You're funning me. No, no, I'm not. What kind of flying machine? A machine in which men will be able to fly. Now, that ain't even possible or reasonable, Mr. Mueller, Otto Mueller. Now, you listen to me. If people believed only in what was reasonable, we'd all be living in caves today, wearing animal skins, eating raw meat, because making fire was not within reason. You don't have to get mad about it. I'm not getting mad, just impatient with fools, that's all. Where did I put that key? So you ain't tried this part yet. Hmm? Thank you, son. Okay, sir. Glad to be your help. Here we are. Well, I've got that paper somewhere. I saw it not too long ago. Somebody's going to learn how to fly. In this workshop, some other workshop like it. Men will study the flight of birds, and we'll learn their secret. Here. Let's take a look at this. What marvelous quality has this thing of skin and bone and feathers that it keeps the body of a bird aloft? Hmm? When we learn that, we'll build wings for men, and they'll fly. Why, man. 
We'll build machines that will carry him off the earth. He'll soar among the clouds. He'll dip down into the marvelous mountains and canyons of the sky. He'll reach for the Empyrean. Then someday, perhaps, he'll solve the secrets of that mysterious ether that separates the moon from the planets and the stars. And then perhaps he'll fly so high that he'll be able to look upon the face of God. <laughs> Hill was open land until this Otto Mueller took it by patent. That means that crazy old crank will destroy Squaw Hill while he fiddles around with his flying machine. I ain't gonna stand for that, Murdoch. I don't think there's much you can do about it, Buck. You'd be surprised how many ways there are to run a man. And I know all of them. Every single one. Hi, Buck. What's up? I think he's after Otto Mueller's hide. He ain't gonna get it. Are you taking an interest in this, Chad? I reckon. Chad, what do you want to get mixed up in this for? Because I like Mr. Mueller for one thing and ain't so fond of Mr. Fannin for another. Besides, maybe he can build a flying machine and that would be a sight to behold. shouldn't be running that way. I've got any time to take things easy. It looks like the play toy. To study the effect of air on the wings. This one's no good. We sailed through the air, didn't it? Well, anything's got a flat surface, so sail through the air if you throw it. But it won't lift. Must be some secret in building a wing. What makes a hawk soar through the air on motionless wings? Well, we'll give it another try. <laughs> myself to die until I finish my work. Yeah, well, you see, I'm going to help him build the flying machine. A flying machine? Yes, sir. Murdoch, look, he wants some time off. That's what he's here for. Well, if that can be arranged. Uh, I mean, you ain't going to miss me none. You all know that. Supposing I were to tell you it can't be arranged. Then I'll have to move in with Mr. Mueller. I guess it is kind of foolish. Wait a minute now, Chad. If you think it's foolish, then why are you doing it? Because I have to, Johnny. I just have to. All right, Chad, take all the time you require. And then when you're through with this foolishness, come back and go to work. See, the bone structure permits the bird to warp the wings and in order to turn. Well, I'll have to incorporate that into my design, but 
What permits the, the wings to lift, to fly? Maybe, maybe it's the feathers. Well, the air blows through the feathers and lifts them. Yes, that's possible. But we'll need a great many. Feathers? Now, what in thunder you aim to do with two gunny sacks of feathers? Well, it's for Mr. Mueller's flying machine. <laughs> flying machine. I've heard of some foolish nonsense in my life, but sir, all I want is two bags of feathers. Well, I'll take a look. But they'll cost you. Thank you. <laughs> Got to. That ain't no help to us. Uh, nothing's gonna help now. Wait till that last well runs dry. Then we'll see how fast the dry town catches fire. And see. The wings here will be built with a wood frame, tapered just like the wing of a hawk. And over the frame, we'll stretch muslin cloth. And on that cloth, we'll put the feathers. Reckon it'll fly? Oh, no, no. This is just a test design to see if the feathers give lift. Something wrong? I guess not. Something happened in town. What's wrong? Well... It seems like everybody in the country think, thinks that you and me are a couple crazy idiots. Well, what'd you expect? I know it hurts. It hurts when people mock you. Call you fool? Sure, sometimes I've wondered whether it's worth it. Then I get to thinking how... how glorious it would be for people to fly. To fly! So I know, I, I know... people say if God meant man to fly, would have given him wings. Well, I say... God meant man to travel on iron rails, he would have endowed him with wheels. If God meant man to travel the oceans, he would have given him fins, flippers. No. No, I say God meant man to do all these things. But he left it to man himself to devise the means of doing it. I say God meant man to fly. But man must devise the means. I suppose you don't make it, huh? I don't make it? See these books? 30 years of failure. Well, if I die before I succeed in flight, these will be left, maybe some more, so that some other fool with a dream won't make my mistakes. Maybe we'd better get back to work. <laughs> for the cloth. Maybe this time, we drink to success. I wasn't getting anywhere. 
did you feel any lift? <sighs> did, did the wings want to go up? Well, not that I can rightly say. Trouble is, see, I, I can't see to tell if there's any lift. Oh, uh, well, maybe. Maybe you go ahead and get up in the wagon. I'll get around behind and run. You get a better idea. We'll give it a try. Yes, sir. If anybody had any sense, they'd have those two looties up on the hill committed to an asylum. Right. <laughs> what about that Lancer kid? Yeah, kid? He's as crazy as the old man. If I were Murdoch Lancer, I'd be well rid of him. Great! Right. Here. That's too much, That's going to pay for the damages. Jelly coming. Chad's in the kitchen. He said he wasn't hungry. Hmm? Hey, what happened to your mouth? I got in a fight. Maria! La comida, por favor! La comida estará lista muy pronto, patrón. Gracias, Maria. Señor Johnny está muy impaciente. Sí, señor. Chad? I made a blame fool out of myself in town today. It must have been quite a sight. I must wish I could have seen myself running across that field, flapping them wings like, like an old rooster thinking he's an eagle. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a sight. Did you really think you could learn to fly by using those wings? I had hopes. I suppose you think I made a dumb fool out of myself. <laughs> no, it's... Well, everybody makes a fool out of himself sooner or later. That's all part of growing up. I remember the first time I ever saw a steam engine. I made a howling idiot out of myself. You never. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> 
See, I was just a green kid then, trapping in the Rockies, and came down to St. Louis on this big mule all stacked up high with skins and furs and all, you know, and... <laughs> well, when I saw it, when I saw the steam engine, well, it almost scared the stuffing out of me. I thought it was the devil. I go on. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Well, I rammed that old mule, went down to the center of town, screaming, Judgment Day is here, and the devil has come on fire and flame to claim his own. <laughs> I just bet that was a sack. Well, when I realized what a fool I'd made of myself, well, I didn't want to speak to anybody. I knew they were all laughing at me. I never would have figured you for such a thing, sir. Well, as I say, a man makes a fool out of himself sooner or later, and makes a fool out of himself because of whiskey or women or gambling or maybe something worthwhile. That's what you got to figure out, Chad, whether it was worthwhile, then maybe you won't feel so bad. Coming in to supper? Uh, well, well I, if you don't mind, sir, I just think I'll sit here and ponder this bill. He'll be all right. Murdoch, hmm? was that story you told? Is that true? You mean that about the steam engine? Yeah, you... you... That's the truth. You ever know me to lie? Well, there's a difference between lying and stretching. But if it was a lie, it was a helpful one. Dumb fool I was. I shame you and Lancer. Don't just stand there. Go ahead. Well, you did look pretty funny out there flapping your wings. You want to go back to him, Chad? Uh, I ain't about to go back and make a big fool out of myself now, already. Eh? Well, now you're being practical like me. And if all the fools were practical like me, we wouldn't have any steamboat, we wouldn't have any steam engine, and we wouldn't have any telegraph system, would we? So why don't you get back up there on that hill with the other crazy fool? Thank you, Johnny. Don't thank me. I think you're both crazy. Mr. Mueller? Came back to help you. No. Nope. Go on back to where you belong. Well, I belong here just as well as any place else. All this could be a, a terrible foolishness. What would happen to you? What would you be? Well, I, I guess I don't really know. But right now I want to be here. Much work to be done. There. See that one? See how the current goes faster as it passes over? Maybe the air, too, goes faster as it passes over the curve of the wing. And because it does go faster, well, maybe it pulls the wing up from above instead of pushing it up from underneath. There. Today, we begin experiments well, a convex swing structure. 40 yards muslin, a two gallon shellac, uh, 100 feet steel wire. Uh, what else? That'll do it. Hey, you and the Dutchman must be going into the dressmaking business. Hey, Chad, uh, tell me, uh, when are you going to flap your wings again? Any day now. Well, now I want to tell you something, and don't you forget it. If falling 100 feet or so ain't going to hurt you one bit. Matter of fact, it's a fact. It's just what... Sudden stop at the bottom that hurts. You know, I guess you'd best be about the 20th person told me that today. <laughs> I 
Yeah, sure, it's Loomis. Anything with that bird sound. Yeah. Well, how's it sound then? Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <laughs> Cuckoo! Well, I'm real glad to see you're doing so well. Ain't it nice to see how much he's improved from what he used to be? That's it, friends. The last well has run dry. There. Finished. Now we'll assemble the flying machine. Say. All right, now listen. Now wait, wait a minute, folks. Come on, hold it now. But there'll be plenty of water for everybody. Bless you, Mr. Fanning. Why, well, thank you, ma'am. However, I, I hope you folks realize that it cost me a fancy dollar to haul this water in here, and I'm I'm gonna have to charge you two bits a bucket for it. <laughs> Well, then let's take the water, folks. Yeah. Now, wait right, a minute. You take that water out there, and there'll be no more brought in here. Instead of trying to rob the man who's trying to do something for you, you should be thinking about those two crazy men sitting on top of a hill full of water not a quarter of a mile away from here. Well, what do you think we ought to do about it? We'll tell Mueller to let us pipe that water in from Squaw Hill, or we'll take it. gonna work? Well, our experiments have proved that the wing will fly, haven't they? Well, working with models is one thing. Put a man in there and something else. You think I'm afraid to try? No, I didn't say that. And you're trying to frighten me. <laughs> well, it's not gonna work, young fella. I waited too long for this minute. Since 30 years ago in Leipzig. What happened there? When I was a young man, there was a crazy old fellow in Leipzig who built a machine out of paper and sticks. And he said it would fly. He took it to the top of the clock tower. Everybody came along, watch him break his neck. Which he did. He jumped from the top of the tower, machine collapsed and he was killed. And everybody said, served him right. Everybody but me, because I saw something that nobody else saw. For one magnificent moment before that machine broke up, it lifted on a current of air. It went up. And for a moment, I saw that old man's face. There was such a, such a glory in it, even though he fell to his death. Because he knew, you see, he knew that even in dying, he succeeded. That's when I first decided to build a flying machine. 
That's also the reason why you can't frighten me out of making this attempt. All right, I'll have your own way. So, now we'll wait for the wind to come up. That Buck Fannin, he's agitating folks to throw Chad and Muller off that hill. Go back to the ranch and tell Murdoch. yourself with a half a pound of dynamite under it. Set the charge. Oh, oh, my drawings! My notes! My machine. My machine. My machine. No, wait. Put it against those timbers. Time fuses out. Ada? He's dead. Went running and busted his heart. I didn't mean for him to die. Anyways, you all saw it. Crazy old fool jumped on the dynamite fuse. The famous crazy old machine. You get out of here, Mr. Fannin. You just get.
car out. You can get no chance. Chad, what happened? He's dead, Johnny. How? I need your help. What? What do you want me to do? Give up his whole life for this machine. I'm gonna fly it for him. Chad, wait a minute. You can't fly this thing. Huh? Now, don't say nothing. You're gonna you tell it? yourself. Just do like I ask you. Look, when I get in there, I want you to throw this handle. Yeah. And it'll start it rolling down the chute. All he wanted was one, one chance, and they wouldn't give it to him. Now he's gonna get it. Got it! Let's go home, Jack. 